So what's going on guys, welcome back to the channel, welcome to another video. Today's video I'm going to be showing you how to replace the expansion tank and the thermostat housing on your M47 BMW 320D. Yeah, this will work for E46 and E90 as well if you've got the same engine, but yeah, the expansion tanks are fairly easy to replace. The thermostat housing is the most specific job, basic tools, common knowledge, and for following this guide you'll know exactly how to do it. And you'll do it the way I find it to be most easiest without having to do any hard work. So yeah. So today it calls for replacing the expansion tank which is right here. I've got a new one. Unfortunately it did not come with a new cap so I have to use my old one for now. And while I'm at it I figured I will replace the thermoset housing which comes with a new thermoset and a new gasket right here. The only thing you have to use is the old hardware for the bolting up system. So yeah that's that. The reason why we have to prompt what prompted to replace the bottle is because mine ended up with a little hairline crack right here. The bottle does come with a new sensor however so that's a good thing. Um, only thing we have to use is the old cap which shouldn't be a, too much of a problem. Inside the bottle finally has the level sensor there. So mine broke somehow a couple years ago so I don't really bother about that anymore. So yeah just gonna put in a new bottle. There's a new thermostat housing which is here. I replace the old ones and yeah when it comes time to get a new cap I will do that probably some other time. But I'm gonna show you guys how to replace the bottle and the thermostat housing now. And yeah we'll see from there. The thermostat housing is held on by one, two, three, four, ten millimeter bolts which will come out. And then this pipe here is what I use. To, this is the goes onto the EGR, which uh, I blanked off completely. So this seals will come out with this radiator pipe right here. This pipe will need to move forward so that this clamp can come off, which uh, there's a new one in the new uh, housing itself. Then to remove the bottle, we have this pipe here and this return pipe here. So this just all the C-clips that are here and here here and there. First things first, what I'm going to do is I'm going to drain out the coolant that's in the bottle and then after I'm going to move over to the hot side here, I'm going to drain the coolant from this side. So the system should be empty as much as possible and as you can see, I don't know if you can see down there, there's a big pool of coolant which is what happening is coming out from here somewhere on the side here is a little pinhole somewhere in the bottle it's pushing out and accumulating all the way down there which is what prompting to replace this bottle today and if this still doesn't work I have to find out where there's nothing okay, this might get a bit, a bit messy so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna use a little flathead screwdriver here to pop open the clips as well as the one up here for the return get these out of the way so that the piping doesn't get damaged so that's there now this is where it gets messy while that drains out I'm gonna start getting a hold of this side here because I don't know how long it's gonna take me if I need to move these out of this piping out of the way or not so I'm gonna release this you can see there's a little, little bit of corrosion on the side here so you can see this was probably on its way out which is probably a good reason why I'm training it now um, there was no actual need to do this right now but uh, I figured while I'm changing the bottle I'll just do this one time because I didn't change this when I changed the water pump if you haven't seen that video I'll leave it linked in the top right corner over here you can have a look and you can see from there Okay, so what I'm going to be doing first, to get a little bit more room here, I'm going to be removing this boost pipe which comes from the filter all the turbo intake here. So this pipe will come off with 5mm uh, Allen hex key here, so that will come out there, as well as the one at the bottom which is there. Once that comes off, I'll be able to just slide this boost pipe out and I'll have more room to work with the fourth bolt which is down here. So it's a bit of a, a little bit of a squeeze and I don't want to take this pipe out so I might need to come up with some, some way to get it out. But otherwise, I want to get this pipe here also so I can have access to one, two and the third one here and then this one here I can find a plan to come out. Now that we have the, the booster taken out and I have the turbo blocked up so nothing gets in, I just hope this is easy enough to 
get this pipe out. I might need to use two hands with this. So I don't need to make it really a bigger deal to get this pipe, to get this one out because this pipe comes out with it. So that's a win. So now I'm just going to take the thermostat housing out. It's just a 10 millimeter. So that shouldn't be too, uh, too much of a deal. To give myself a little bit of extra room with this pipe here, I moved out the charge pipe and I loosened up the number 10 which is found at the back right which is here and I need to loosen up this one which you can only get to it with a spanner. It's a little bit of a pain but it's just enough so that I can get so I can move this pipe out of the way and have some wiggle room just for the added extra relief and no pressure, I just went ahead and removed both number 10 so I can wiggle this pipe out of the way. So you can see I've got some room. So I'm just gonna get this out, it's fine like that. And just get this out of the way. That was not supposed to be this way. And now I'll show you the comparison between this old one and the new one. Which while I'm here, let me just remove these number 10s and get this bottle out. I still have to disconnect the sensor which is at the back and the bottom down there, which shouldn't be too much of a hassle. Okay, that's out. And then to release this. Just great. I've got it. two tens here for the bottle, two tens here for the coolant pipe to cover. This is surprisingly not bad. It's not great either, but and this is where it'll start to worry me over here. There's a crack here, but I mean it's below, it's before the clip, so it shouldn't be a problem. And it, it wasn't leaking here either way, so. I'm just gonna leave that for now and deal with it when it does break. Because these pipes are inexpensive, relatively speaking. But yeah, I've got that I've got that sorted out now, just for a matter of showing it the before and after. So for comparison, this is the old one which is there. And here's the new one. This is what it's supposed to look like. Because the thermostat just locks into these little clips here. That's fine there. And here's the problem with the old one. With the old bottle, it had that little pinhole right here and you can see where the water is dripping out from so yeah I tried to save it didn't really work out which is why we're putting the new one so all I'm gonna do is just transfer this over this clip here so that it holds that quite a pipe in place and then put this one on So now it comes time for the fun part, which is reinstalling the bottle. Now let's connect the sensor at the back. I'll show you guys if you want to. We have the sensor here. It only fits in one way. So you hear that click, that's it there. It's a matter of 
installing the piping at the bottom and we'll press this clip in and I'll push it inside here we need to answer this okay that was a bit of a pain to get in but it's in so I'm just putting the return pipe and the same procedure right bottle is done now just to get the thermoset in which shouldn't be that much of a problem For those who want to know the actual torque specs, it's 10 Newton meters. Now, if you don't have a torque wrench, it goes down to 10. Just regular hand tight until you feel some good resistance that should be enough. Thermoset housing is secure. Now I'm just gonna bolt up the distribution pipe back in place and then we'll bleed the system afterwards. But let me just put this pipe back in and I can take my cloth out. So what I was saying is it's better you put this pipe in first, then you have more leverage to work with the thermoset housing itself. Now that we've got everything clamped up, everything uh, low, uh, closed up and everything, these, bo these bolts are tight, that one's tight at the back, uh, this whole system is closed, the turn pipe is done, the feed pipe is done. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to fill this with just regular water, and there's a reason for that. I'm going to fill this with regular water to make sure that there's no leaks or anything as such, and then in a future video, I will be draining the complete cooling system and put in different water and coolant. But I am going to put coolant in now just to make sure that there's no corrosion or anything going forward which I'll show you guys in a minute so now it's time to bleed the system all I'm going to do firstly is I'm going to cold bleed the whole car so what that means is you going to take either a star or a flathead screwdriver and you're going to undo or release the bleeder screws because these are mechanical water pumps they have these bleeder screws here and you can cold bleed it so you're just going to open up this screw here and I'll open it completely and then I'm gonna do the cap or we'll do the bottle last once we have fluid in the system. So I'm gonna fill water in the bottle here, let it run through the entire system and you're gonna watch out here so you can see the air bubbles and all the air pockets coming out. So I'm just gonna start filling up. I have five liters of water in my container right here. So I'm gonna start filling. And as you can see it's a constant stream of water so I'm just gonna stop I'm just gonna plug this back up here. Usually there will be, be three spots to bleed. One will be here, which I do not have anymore. Which will be a thermoset up here, where my hand is. There will be this main uh, feed here, and then the bottle itself. Now I do not have this because I blanked my EGR completely. I do not have any EGR on this car. As you can see, it's blanked off here. The coolant pipes are all blanked off. And the plug is on the exhaust manifold there. So the entire EGR system has been created. I'm going to fill the bottle up until this spout comes all the way up and then I'm going to open this up and bleed the bottle itself. With that being full, I'm just going to open up here. With there being no bubbles anymore, Close this up and tighten it down. You don't want it to be too tight otherwise you'll strip the thread. So that much is enough. As well as here, it's enough as well. So now all the matter is to start the car and fill it up with coolant until you can see that the coolant starts to change color. That's all you need. Unless you're buying a unless you're buying a pre-mix, then that's a whole, whole different story. The bleeding part is done, I'm going to just release some of this tension here on the screw. As you can hear, the air is already starting to build up on this. So while that's being forced out,
So now it's time to actually physically bleed the car and engine power. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start the car. And as you can see, it is returning. So that's a good sign. And there's no air in the system when it's going to turn in. And as for everything else, I don't see any leaks. Apart from wherever I dropped over. And the return is also changing color. So that's a good thing. But to get it to be doing properly, I'm going to do, do one thing. Now to actually bleed the car properly, climate control to the heat, to heat setting. Make sure that the air conditioning is off. Turn the heat all the way to 28, which is full 28 degrees Celsius. And let it run from there. Level is still fine. That will be running. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna close it up and let it come up to operating temperature. So what I've done is I pulled up the digital uh, temperature gauge, the digital coolant temperature gauge from the hidden menu. If you haven't seen that video, I have a link up in the corner up here. It's one of my very first videos I made. So you can monitor the coolant temperature right here and make sure that the fan will come on around 105 degrees if it ever gets to that point. But the normal operating temperature is between 80 to 90 degrees. So I'm just gonna let this idle for a bit and see if anything has to happen, if there's any anomalies that are to occur. Now that the car is up to decent temperatures at 81 degrees, 82 degrees right now. The fan has not come on as yet. I'm look, I was feeling the pipes, so pipes are no pressure and everything building up. So I'm confident that this is sorted out and all taken care of. And finally, everything seems to be fine. Uh, I'm just gonna monitor this over the next couple of days. And yeah, I'll give you guys an update once that's done. So if you found this video informative and you found it, to be useful please give it a thumbs up leave a comment down below and subscribe to the channel if you're new it's a complete reset for me and i'll have an update for you guys in the next coming videos but yeah thank you so much for watching i'll see you guys in the next video hope you guys see you soon peace